cuts from the chainsaw, uh, snags falling, um, just the usual bees, snakes, snags, okay. footing. These are the dangers Zacharatus says he and other forest workers brave every day behind the trees. State and federal agencies hire contractors like Grayback Forestry Incorporated for projects aimed at keeping forests throughout the nation healthy, beautiful, safe and productive. Though the work is hazardous, Arata says Grayback Forestry Incorporated takes care of its employees. We leave our base at 6.30 and then we usually get back around 4 or 5. So good. If we do 8 hours on the hill, it's a 10 hour day with driving to and from the shop. And you get paid for the drive also? Yes, we get paid for the drive time as well as the time on the hill. Okay, and uh, do you feel like there's access to water, brakes, food? Yeah. The equipment? Yeah, we get all of our pp &E provided for us. Um, what is that uh, personal protective gear, our hard hats, our fly eyes, our chaps, whistles, stuff like that. Sometimes we don't pay as much, but we, we pay and, uh, and we've always paid on time and um, we can sleep at night. But not all forest workers are employed by Michael Wheelock, president of Grayback Forestry Incorporated. For those workers, exploitation... <laughs> cuts deep into their reality. For example, no les dan For example agua, no les dan they don't give them water, they don't give them breaks, they don't pay them overtime, and sometimes they don't even pay them the time they work. News 10 was told by former employees these contractors take advantage of their workers. We contacted each company listed here for a statement, but only heard back from Ponderosa Reforestation Incorporated. What happens is one gives them the form and they don't read it. They just sign it and turn it in. That's what happens. The worker has to be more alert. Juan Bencomo, president of Ponderosa Reforestation Incorporated, refers to paperwork contractors must give their employees by law. There's information here on uh, wage rates, on safety, on hours, uh, overtime, uh, that kind of thing. Um, there's also uh, some uh, information for um, workers uh, the uh, employees are required to post. Uh, we have Spanish versions of this as well. There are laws in place aimed at preventing the exploitation of forest workers. What remains unclear is who is in charge of regulating those laws. The nature of the work being uh, kind of out of sight, out of mind, it's, it would be very also difficult for them to really keep track of that. But there's probably a lack of oversight the U.S. Forest Service issued a statement saying our contract terms and conditions require contractors follow all applicable safety and labor laws. Other proactive measures include contracting guidance and communications with DOL. Jeff Genko's district director with the Department of Labor Wage and Hour Division says over the last six years, his office has completed 30 investigations in the region, ultimately giving $450,000 in back wages back to approximately 15 1,500 workers. According to Genko's, contractors not paying workers face consequences. We make employees whole that weren't paid correctly the first time around and also include civil money penalties so that employers understand the importance of compliance. Along with these fines, Genko says it's also important for the DOL to provide a support network for employers. I think via the Forest Service, we provide a lot of uh, outreach to the Forest Service, points of contact that are, uh, that are in daily communication with the employers to let them know what's required of them, as well as directly with the employers. So I think that that's another uh, element and aspect of this. But one Grayback Forestry Incorporated base manager says those points of contact may not be talking to the right people at the right time. A lot of the interaction is directly with the foreman uh, and I would say oftentimes they'll come out after the work is completed and inspect the work. So they're not dealing too much with the individuals that are out here performing it. As for unsafe working conditions, the DOL says the Oregon Occupational Safety and Health Division has jurisdiction over those matters. Melanie Massaros with Oregon OSHA says the state agency has cited some of these local contractors in past years and will continue addressing safety concerns if reported. But fearing retaliation, many workers don't call in law violations. Oregon OSHA says that's out of its hands. We have jurisdiction over the safety and health part, but Boley has jurisdiction over the, the discrimination aspect of it. 
When East 10 spoke to the Bureau of Labor and Industries, it took us right back to the beginning, saying the United States Department of Labor is in charge of worker enforcement on national forests. Covering your news in Southern Oregon, Jessica Denova, News 10, good morning.